an auction and I have stuff. Uh, but while I was there, uh, this wasn't in the auction, but it was in a container. And I asked about it and I bought this very cheaply because I didn't get a picture of where it was, but essentially the entire container looked like this and it just blended in. Um, lucky I spotted it. It's a diesel wacker plate. Um, it's very heavy, I don't know how I'm gonna get it out. Um, all I can tell you is that it's got a handle and some kind of hydraulic drive. <coughs> hydraulic pipes. I know nothing else. There is a starting handle on top, which well, two starting handles. That's the wrong one. Um, yeah, so I need to get that out. I need to get all that out first and all the stuff in the front. We'll work on that. We'll get that out. I'll have a look. Right, it's time to make an attempt on getting that out. I've got all the rest of the junk out and dealt with it. I'm going to try and use my scissor lift trolley to get that out without damaging the van. So, wish me luck. Oh, that is heavy. Right, let's uh, drag that in. There it is, straight out of the van. Let's um, get the briefest of looks like, shall we? The starting handles, I think it's that one. Um, let's get this off so I can see it. The air filter's smashed. That's a pre cleaner, so that should be alright. Um, well, there's a lot of bits on here that is worrying. These bits of this. right but it's got like a another collar on it seems to go the opposite way hang on let's see if we can uh, show you engine noises uh, it's covered in crap uh, and bits and I'm hoping none of it's off this this looks complete so I'm hoping this isn't dismantled I don't know what was here oh put the starting handle maybe I think maybe the starting handle sits in there and there's a bracket that holds it uh, the air cleaner is destroyed but doesn't mean we can't fix that later uh, it says it's a Farriman, Farriman diesel. Lampathine? Lampathine? Farriman diesel, Germany. What else we got? 15D? I don't know. Uh, it looks okay, there's a lot of fluid on the bottom. I wonder if that's hydraulic, because it does appear to have hydraulic something. We've got, yeah. I suspect this is some kind of hydraulic drive that maybe reverses, this is possibly a reverser. Um, I'm imagining forward, back, that's free. Uh, it's very nicely made. I mean, even this catch that holds this up has got a grease nipple on it. Nice little touch. Uh, so we've probably got a decompressor somewhere, which I wonder if that's this. We've got a down. I wonder if that's stop. We've got a nothing, and then when you pull it up, it clicks. When you pull it up, it clicks into position. So I suspect that's going to be a throttle. So that's the governor. We've got that. 
Don't know what that does. I don't really want to touch it. Oh. It's done something. Should I have played with it? Just clicks. I don't know what that does. Uh, what's the red thing? I'm going to say that's probably the oil filler. Mm, and we appear to have a dipstick. Not me, an actual dipstick. Okay. Uh, does it unscrew? Maybe that's engine oil down there. <laughs> so we shan't try and start it without popping a bit of something in there. It's also got an oil filter. Interesting. So let's have a pressurised fuel system, uh, oil system in it. I might have to look up some stuff about this engine to find out what that does for the starting procedure. I wonder if that's some kind of starting position or something. Um, that's going to need replacing. I'd like to open that and check it's not got too much crud in it before I start it. Ah, ah. I think that's decompressed it, you know. Is that going to click round? Yeah, there we go, it's the decompressor, at some point that's going to compress. Okay, I get it, so you set that, turn it to it until it clicks I think, like that. Good, everything's freed up on it. I have a diesel whacker before, uh, compaction plate, whacker plate, whatever you want to call it, before, and I spent ages freeing up every mechanism on it, and I got it to run and never whack because I couldn't get the engine to rev. Hopefully, we don't have that problem with this one. Uh, the spill off pipe looks distinctly mouldy and scabby. I shan't play with it until we know if this works. Moldy crud. Shot. I need to hoover all this out. I mean, it's sat in that unit for a while, and I don't know why. It could be dead, I suppose. Well, let's uh, get on and have a look. Right, I've uh, took this off. It's just like a swirl pre-cleaner. You've got an air cleaner in there. Like a cartridge one, so I'm just going to leave that. Pop some oil in. Uh, and it says on here, no startup spray. We're going to ignore that. It has some in it. Uh, and now we'll leave that off, which I think would be there. I don't know. Uh, we'll set this to there. Somewhere. Easy stuff.
of life yet. Okay, so there's no fuel coming out of the leak off pipe on that, which was broken anyway. So there's no diesel getting to here. There is some diesel in the tank, it's old, but it needs to come out. Fuel filter into here. And I've just noticed though, what is this? Some kind of button, it's bent. I'm gonna try and bend it back and see if it moves and does something useful. Well, balls, I um, left the banjo bolt loose uh, because no fuel was coming through. I have done a little bit of a tinker and uh, yeah, I did this and no fuel ran through and it was really thick and gooey and I just loosely did it up. But it wasn't that thick, so it has come out and gone there. There. And all there. Oh, and all under there. Yeah, my garage stinks like old diesel and so it smells like terps or something. It's horrible. I need to clean that up and get it out of the way for now because I need to use the garage. I've turned it over a few times, just checking things. Haven't sorted out the fuel yet. I'm going to try just spray an easy start in, see if I can get it to do something. If I can keep it going with a few sprays of easy start, I'll pull the handle. And I'll see if it seems to do anything. Just so I know if it works. Just give, give it a go. Let's give it a go. Uh, right, see those little white bits? That's water in the fuel. Um, I managed to get some fresh fuel in the tank, which has not filtered through to here, but when I tipped this up, water came out. Um, I think the pipe's blocked and the filter's blocked um, with this sticky varnish stuff that was in the tank. I thought it was a leaf, but it's not, it's varnish. I found it. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna um, probably just rig up something else temporarily to the injection pump, like a funnel or a something, some kind of container here, um, because I think cleaning that out and then putting a new filter on is could be a waste of time if the engine's broken. Um, I'm gonna see what I can find. Oh, I apologize, it's a bit dark, but the sun has come out and I'm not used to that. Um, right, I've rigged it up an old quail cast fuel tank which has got a nice little uh shape on the back of it to go around that bar it's got the cable ties um a briggs and stratton fuel filter that will catch any large bits but not really ideal for diesel um a bit of unleaded fuel hose i assume that will mean it'll survive diesel um and what i've also had to do is pull this pipe which is uh should be for the leak off there um, and I'm going to tuck that up here. And the reason for that, there we go. And the reason I've tucked that up there is because it's actually just teed into this union. And if that's too low, the fuel in here will just go down the pipe through the union and back out of that pipe and, and piss out. So this should keep, if I've only put a little bit in, 
should keep it going into there. Um, so I'm gonna put some diesel in this, crack this fitting, and then we're gonna turn the engine over with the decompressor set, wherever that goes, um, and see if we can crack the line off here for the injector. It's the hard line that goes with the injector. We'll crack it there, get fuel flow. We'll crack it at the top, we'll get fuel flow, and we'll let a load pump out, try and get some new stuff through. And we'll see if we can get some pressure and get it to run on diesel. Yeah, got fuel there. Okay. Ooh. I'm getting some fuel out of there. Yeah. Hang on, I'm bright in. Whoop. some of that horrible old fuel out. Ooh, that sounds like the injector firing. All right. Well, should we give it a, give it a few cranks and See if we can get it going. All right, so fuel rack on. Check the manual, that is definitely on. Uh, we've got excess fuel, excess fuel or start control here. It says pull it out. That was that bent thing. It says pull it out and it should knock back in when, uh, when it starts, so that's fine. That will need a little click around one notch. At the moment, it's set to disengage uh, the valve completely. So one click. You can just freely turn the engine. Another click, it starts to do that rotating where it lets you get up to speed before it engages. Uh, yeah, let's give it a go. It ran. It ran. Oh, I'm all excited. I didn't think that'd work. Uh, I tried to vibrate off my trolley. It was doing something, wasn't it? And that might have just been the vibration of the engine. Get it off the trolley, clean some of the crap off of it, and have another go. And put the air filter back on. Let's do all that. I don't want to run it with these screws on because they're going to fall off on my driveway and then I'll run them over with cars. I'm going to say I think this might do more harm than good. It's ripping and it's rotten, so I think we'll just run it without it for a minute. I think this is more likely to get sucked into it. Right, I've got to get it off the trolley. Brute force increments, I think.
engine runs. Um, it was actually spewing fuel out of the little leak off pipe, uh, which doesn't make any sense because that's not the leak off from the injector. That wasn't leaking off. It was. That's just from here, so it must be some kind of pressure fluctuation. Uh, okay, just pour diesel everywhere. I can deal with that. It vibrates. That's good. That did nothing. But I guess it could be out of fluid. Do we think this is the fluid reservoir? It does look like a filler, doesn't it? What do you reckon? I was imagining that that had flow. Maybe it doesn't. Maybe, maybe when you push, this is like a master cylinder. Maybe it just pushes pressure one way or the other. Not really clear what it does, to be honest. Let's have a look. Uh, it puts pressure on one end or the other of this. And what do we think they are? Bleed nipples? And that could be leaking, which is why it's covered in fluid. Hmm. Oh, I reckon. Take that off. Have a look in there. And I reckon you're meant to. That's that's meant to apply pressure to one of those. And that's like a shuttle valve or something. Get some hydraulic oil. Put it in up there. Try and bleed it out down there. Just, just see what happens. Ah. Look, it's got a tiny dipstick. She's got a thing on it. And it looks like you're cleaning it. So just put some in. Is that it? Yeah. Oops. Oh no. Oh no. <laughs> I got too brave. That's something. Making clunking noises in the bottom, but it still feels, for want of a better word, dead. Let's have a look at the, uh, have a look at the bottom bit. So I've cleaned out one of the little screws in the bottom there, and it is a hex. So I'm going to try and screw in it, although my concern is that it's at the bottom of that. So it can't be like a bleed nipple, because you'd have to have the machine upside down. So I don't really know, but I mean, maybe it's internally channeled or something. Let's just take it out. I'm not going to make it any worse. Somehow it doesn't work. What I really did there was put some fluid in there and keep pumping the handle backwards and forwards until fluid came out of both and then I sealed them up. I have no idea what I'm doing. So the other thing was when I took one off and then moved the handle, eventually it stopped going one way and it pumped one side so full of fluid it just wouldn't move. So yeah, so I think I've centralised it and then hopefully that's centralised. We'll try starting it, we'll just see what it does. Now we know it runs, I need to sort the tank out. I've taken the fitting out here and identified it and I'll get a new one. 
Um, and I need to get some leak off pipe and a, a T fitting and some other bits. I'll take the tank off and clean it so we can use that because that's a bit rubbish. I've got the tank off uh, and I couldn't get any fuel out of this and I couldn't even blow any air through. I've just pulled the pipe off and um, I think I can see why. It's got like a hard varnish. So it's um, completely clogged. I'll try and push that out and then we'll try and rinse the tank out with something. I'll try to break clean and swill it round um, and then we'll progressively try other things, I guess. Well, I think this thing's earned being cleaned. Um, I've got the bits to fix the fuel system. I'll sort that out. So I'm going to take this off, the temporary stuff. It's leaking anyway. It's everywhere. Um, and I think, I think I've got... I think I've got this working. Um, I noticed, fresh eyes and all that, these two little screws, which when I worked this backwards and forwards and opened the screws, then it made a sort of uh, air bubbling noise inside the hydraulics. I could force some air through a tiny hole and then suddenly this felt very different. Uh, so I kind of worked it backwards and forwards and play with the screws and then I think I set it roughly to the middle and closed them. Anyway, that sounds like that's done something. That sounds like that's done something. So I'm pretty sure that's operating that shuttle thing in there now uh, and changing the phasing. So pretty sure that's sorted. Um, so let's clean this up now. So it's going to take a while because I don't, I'm not going to pressure wash it off or anything because that will go everywhere. Uh, I'm going to get some rags and some cleaner and just start cleaning. It's been quite a long process. Right, then with the tank to go back on, and then the fuel lines, which I'll talk about in a second. This went in this way. Okay. So the tank is on. Um, I'm giving it a bit of a wipe over. Uh, you might notice I've already put a fitting in the top of the injector. It was an M8 by one thread, uh, and four mil pipe. And I also got a little brass T as well, which I think is far too big. So I have to think about that. Maybe we'll loosen that off. Uh, and I've also got some new eBay special leak off pipe, which said it was 3.5 mil. So I'm hoping that with a four mil T, It'll push on nicely and possibly not need little clips. So a bit of crap has fallen down inside there, so I'm going to blow it out with some air. So I've put an O-ring around that that I think will help seal, but I'm not sure. So the O-ring just got squished straight out, so I put some PTFE on it. Um, which I don't know if it's the best thing, but it's, it's low pressure. It's just, would you just stop it dribbling out? Now I've got to get this T in there, and if you can see, it's the same 
So this is the gap. So that's no good. So let's start by plumbing. This is the existing pipe that goes back down to the injection pump. That seems in okay condition. Apart from having something broken off in the end of it. What do we do? That, that into there. There we go, much neater. So brass fitting in there, brass T, move that fitting upwards and tightened it. When it comes down, that's the original pipe, that seems okay. And look how clean it looks. And that's now a new fuel line. I've got a new fuel filter, a new oil filter. And that's, I'll run the new fuel line round, put the new fuel filter in, and then we've got to do uh, an oil change because goodness only knows how old this oil is. I have to work out what oil it wants. How about the manual actually, thinking about it? I emailed Aman, people that make it, um, and they got back to me and said, oh, we haven't got a... I asked for a service manual for it. Uh, they said they haven't got a service manual, but they have got the parts diagram, which they sent me. Uh, and actually it wasn't just a parts diagram, it was the user manual with the parts diagram attached. Uh, and they emailed it to me, so that was very nice. Well done, Aman. If that's how you say it. Sorry if that's not how you say it. Um, yeah, so I'll have a look in that and see what oil it needs. Time for an oil change. Oh no. Oh, oh no. Oh, it's a disaster. Oil filter then. New one. Always pop a spot of fresh oil on the uh, on the rubber seal. We must be hand tight, but when you've got a hand covered in oil, that's really hard. <sighs> Should be fine. And these little bits of the fuel line that I've used on it, and I've put them in a bit of diesel, and I'm just going to check that they don't dissolve because I'm worried about them not being fuel resistant. Uh, so we'll see what happens to those. Air yeah, filter next. Old one. Absolutely horrific. New one. Much better. It even comes with a little rubber thing on the bottom, which was separate, I had to push it on. Um, in case anyone needs part numbers for one of these weird old ferryman things. The original was an LX293 made by someone. And that's the one that I got. Clean this up as well. I might need another hand for this, hold on. Yeah, that was a two-handed push to get the rubber uh, seal on the air filter on. Goodness, oh, everything's a two, two-handed job. Um, now, the other issue I've got is that the pre-cleaner on top is completely busted. Um, this is all that's left of it. That's the lid, smashed. That's the pre-cleaner swirly bit. I thought it was an oil bath. I think I may have called it an oil bath. It's not, it's a. It's one of those um, centrifugal pre-cleaners. Um, the lugs are all broken off except one. I wouldn't be the end of the world. They go into those. really know what to do about this because I can't find another one uh, and I can't find a part number either. I tried looking online, I think it's proprietary. Uh, so I haven't worked out what to do yet. I wonder if that... Yeah, 
mean, that gives me that, I suppose. I could maybe make something. I don't know. Um, the cap, again, I could probably make something out of something else that's that shape. Um, because that's pretty well trashed. This. I haven't even got the pieces. They weren't there. Um, it's pretty badly cracked. I could probably clean it all up and glue it. Make a side out of something else, a bit of old paint tin or something, but again, it's a bit crap, isn't it? Um, I don't think about that. I don't really know how else to adapt anything to fit on to this, and I can't leave it like that because rain and crud will go in there, which that protects it from. Hmm. I'm gonna have to have a think about that. Anyway, look how clean it looks. That's nice, isn't it? Uh, it needs oil putting in. I should do something to remind me. Uh, need the dipstick hanging out. That'll remind me. Um, I haven't found out what it needs and I'm going to go indoors because it's late. Uh, but yeah, it's looking nice. I'm quite pleased with it, apart from the lack of air cleaner. But I think that's something I'll have to deal with for another day. Um, I'm bother cleaning the plate, but they get crappy anyway. Um, right, I need to pop some oil in. However, so I've had a quote for these three pieces. Uh, very good company. They got back to me really quickly. I sent them pictures uh, and they took the serial number and stuff of the engine. And they said they can get these three things. Um, I mean, admittedly, I probably don't need that one, but I did include it in the pictures. I think it's irrelevant. Uh, it, plus, the, with the VAT and the delivery, we're going to be looking at £450. Pounds. £450. I mean, that's not happening. So I suspect I'm going to end up bodging this together with bits of plastic and glue, um, unless I can find a used one somewhere, but I currently can't. I've had these bits soaking in diesel for weeks now. Let's have a look. Seems okay, doesn't look like it's coming apart, does it? Oops. It does feel soft though, but I think it was a soft hose. Because it doesn't have any reinforcement. Yeah, it's fine. Well, it's finally time to try and fix this. I can't find a new one, a replacement one. Uh, but it is only a pre-cleaner, it just catches dust. So a plant pot, similar size. I'm gonna cut a piece out the side with the lip. Basically stick it across that hole. Stick it over there. I'll stick another bit over that crack. Uh, and then for the top bit, that is all broken. Actually, now I cleaned it up. Comes back together okay. I found a hose clamp. It's the same size, and then I'll do it up to draw that in. Like I said, it's just a dust filter. There's an actual filter in there. Um, so I think that'll be all right. And I now I'll literally cover any cracks with duct tape and it'll do. It's what to do for now until I find a second hand one. Uh, the cheapest I found, but another company in Europe quoted me um, for the entire, weirdly, the one that quoted me 450 for this, another company quoted me about 200 and something euro for the whole assembly. But I've got most of the assembly and it's gonna do its filtering. This just Stops the air filter clogging up too quickly. See how we get on, cut all this and have a go. Well, I've made a thing from a plant pot. Uh, I've had to electrical tape it on, which does cover up the fact it's clear and you can see the dust level. Uh, so it might need checking occasionally, but I'm not gonna use it much. Um, it's got that kind of lip going on. Some cutting. Uh, if I get this, this on. I know it's all smashed. In a minute, I'll put the, that's what the hole was for. Uh, I'll put the hood clamp round and clamp the whole lot together. And I reckon it's gonna do something. Like I said, it's only, a, it's only a swirling dust catcher. If it doesn't even catch any dust, it doesn't actually matter, but it will also act as a lid and stop rain going down in the top. So let's just give it a go. Well, I think that's a success, a bit of duct tape. 
and tape some plastic plant pot and uh, yeah, I'll pop that on. You watch now that Jubilee clip will get in the way. Right, so actually I've worked out why it was broken. Um, I thought it had been trodden on, the side was smashed. Actually, if you look down there, look, the frame is encroaching on that and I can't get it on because it hits the frame. So, the frame's bent. The whole frame is bent over slightly. So I need to bend the whole frame back slightly. Just a little bit. Did I? Let's give this a go to straighten the frame. So it's a hydraulic uh, body repair thingy. One of them. Uh, which I got at an auto jumble. Some very nice gentleman for a very reasonable price. So what I've done is I've set it up with a foot. Let's be, let's be on the head. Uh, a foot to space it out slightly around the hydraulic hoses and around the front of the engine. And then that one so it grips into the frame. We'll give that some gentle pumping. It's going. Look at the gap down there by the fuel tank. sprung back a bit, hopefully I've done enough. Not quite. Have another go. So I'm to change the oil in the bottom. Oh, I've had to look in the manual for this. Um, that's the oil level plug. That's the drain plug, which is very round looking. And there's a, a vent screw, which is that one. Yeah. Um, I'm gonna have to try and do all them, but those ones are on the other side need cleaning first. I did open the fill level and oil poured out, so I popped it back in, so it must be overfilled. So the engine holds a litre of oil and it wants 1040. Just bought some cheap uh, engine oil and the bottom bit, the exciter as they call it. Uh, also wants the same oil, so that's good. It wants half a litre in the bottom. Let's tip a litre of oil into the uh, engine. And then what I'll do is I'll decompress it. Get that oil pumped around and into that new oil filter. And then I'll check the uh, level in a second. Done. So, oil's done, oil level checked. Oil's changed in here, new couple washers, one there and there, and the air one. And I filled it up and that was the right bugger. I had to fill it by holding that just over the top hovering. And because it's so thick, it took like 15 minutes to pour a trickle in there. It took half a litre, like it wanted. Uh, I can't run it now to fully test it and test the reverser because it's the afternoon and people are in their gardens and that's not fair. So um, another day I will test this and we'll make sure that we go forwards and backwards and then I'll be happy with it. Time to give it a go. Put some fuel in, uh, and I know fuel's made it through the filter because it started to pour out of the banjo fitting I had forgotten to do up. So let's give this a try.
it worked, uh, and it goes forwards and backwards. Lovely. Uh, however, there was a lot of oil coming out of here, um, and actually, when I idled it down, there was a little bubble here, which must be pressure inside. Um, so I took the oil filler off, and it was there's a lot of blow by. I think the engine's quite worn, um, although it runs very cleanly. Uh, but yeah, it was blowing stuff out of here. It doesn't appear to be a crankcase breather anywhere. So I'm going to have to look in the manual and see if there's something missing. Uh, I wonder if there's meant to be a breather somewhere and it's blocked, but I can't find one. Um, yeah, it, essentially it was pressurising inside the crankcase and that was the weak spot, that sort of O-ring seal there. When it idled down and ran at idle for a bit, it stopped doing it. When I revved it up, it started bubbling. You can see a little air bubble coming out and then oil followed. So I need to find out if there's meant to be a breather. Uh, and I can only assume it's blocked. Hmm. Onwards and upwards. Uh, it's also leaking from here. See this little dribble coming down? And actually, if you look at it, that cork gasket's horrible. So that needs a new gasket as well. So Google tells me that this has probably got an internal breather, which is some kind of P valve, like a P in a thing that jiggles up and down, in the head somewhere. Whether you can get it, get to it or get it out without complete engine disassembly, I don't know. But the amount of oil that came out when I ran it for that 30 seconds unacceptable and that's also probably why this thing was covered in oil because it's been spewing all, its, all of its oil out um, so I need to try and find that I'm going to find the exploded diagram and try and find it and then work out how to get to it parts are so expensive for this I don't really want to take it apart but mm, I might have to so I've done some reading apparently the breather valves under here it's got a little ball in it that acts as a valve and if it's I think it was if it's clear it's the wrong sort of plastic if it's red it's the right sort of plastic um so let's have a look take the nuts off can come off nope. hold on that washer was holding me up right, so let's have a look Move that. There's the breather valve. It's uh, that there. Let's see if the little jiggly ball moves. Okay. How does it work? I'm a bit lost, if I'm honest. It just seems to run around in there. That goes into the inlet manifold. I don't understand how you get pressure in the inlet manifold that will push this up. Who knows? Um, the other thing is that the push rod tube is the bit that was actually leaking. And that moves. It's soaking up all of the excess. Doesn't actually move, and I think it's not pushed down enough. There we go. So could it simply be that this seal is no good? The seal looks fine, although it is very dirty. It just doesn't. No real downward pressure on it. I'm not surprised it's leaking. How is that supposed to? I mean, that's clearly where the oil is supposed to run down from the rockers down there and back into the crankcase. How are we ever supposed to get that to a point where it seals? Still soft, not on hard. Um, I suppose there's a few options. It's swollen slightly. Sometimes that can happen, and it doesn't quite fit under that. There's a misalignment. 
Can't get it square. So if I turn that. Nope. Is there meant to be something that holds it down? No, so there's a. What does that do? Oh, so there are bolts that come up. Try. It looks like if I remove those bolts, this piece would come off. And then that might come out if we removed the push rods. And then maybe we could come up with a bet better way to seal that or replace that O-ring with maybe one that's slightly smaller. So it would be squashed in this flanged area, flared area, sorry. There doesn't appear to be a way to force that downwards and hold it there. Or we come up with a way to push that down hard, maybe put a grub screw in there. Then why do I need to do that? I shouldn't need to do that. I'm gonna need some thinking. Maybe it's leaking from there just because it's leaking, not because of the excess pressure. Maybe that's a normal amount of pressure. Who knows? One leak to be solved was this one. It's this little metal plate. Uh, I've made a new gasket for it, which was really easy. I just chopped around that with a razor blade. Uh, and then I've got little punches that you hit with a hammer and you just knock a couple of holes in it. Uh, I've cleaned up the bolts. The, the holes do go right through, so they're gonna leak oil as well. They have copper washers on, but I mean, to tighten them enough to make a copper washer work, you'll destroy the gasket, which I think is what's happened. So I'm just gonna use some gasket jointing. I'm gonna put that around the outside of this on both sides, uh, and then I'm gonna put it on the threads and around the heads of these as well. It's sort of like a non-setting, so it won't be permanent. All right, but I should seal that up. My plan for dealing with the next oil leak is I've cleaned all of that. I lifted the O-ring off, I've cleaned this, I've cleaned the O-ring, I've cleaned up there. I can't really get it apart without taking that bit off and I don't wanna find that there's a gasket under there that I don't have enough to make one. So my plan is though, to basically force that down. I'm gonna push it down with a pair of pliers, put some weight on it to compress that seal, and put a Jubilee clip around it at the top to stop it riding back up, because it's free to move. There's no real force on it. Uh, so my plan is, yeah, force it down onto that seal and keep it there by tightening this. I've undone this so it can open, and I'll clip it round, do it back up. And there we go, that was the right pain. I had to put I've got a T-handle bar pushed down on the top of the tube with my left hand. With my right hand, I had to jiggle that to the top and do it up. But it's uh, definitely more compressed than it was. That's keeping it still from going up. And then I took the gasket off, cleaned it, cleaned all the areas, put a bit of blue hyaluron on there, and I did the same with the nuts so that I didn't have to do anything up too tight. I was a little bit worried that these were too tight originally. I also checked the little jiggle ball tube in there. If I put in a tube on it, blowing through the tube, the air went in fine into the manifold like it should, so venting the engine, and then I sucked back on it and the ball sucked up and stopped, which is what it's supposed to do. So actually I think the leak was just a leak, not because of pressure. But now, that's done, that's done, that's done, that's done. We should have a much less leaky engine. We might be finished. Sorry about the engine noise in the background, if you can hear it. I've got some uh, exhaust paste sitting on the uh, back box of this that fell off. Um, hopefully this will be the last bit of the video on this. I'm gonna run it up now, uh, let it get warm, and then run it around a bit and see whether it stops leaking oil. I think I've got a couple of small leaks still. Um, this has got oil on it. I just wiped it off, but there's a little bit coming out of that. There's not much I can do about that. Imagine there's an O-ring or something that's got damaged when that was bent. Um, and it's a bit damp around here, so either this leak off pipe is leaking under the braiding or it's just leaking <laughs> from here somewhere. That pipe I put on isn't, it's a bit, I think maybe I've over tightened that. Uh, so maybe a slight diesel leak. But, um, we'll see how that goes. Let's, uh, let's start her up and see what happens.
warm up for a minute at idle. I think it hurt me. Oh, that handle's loose. No leaks, no leaks, no obvious leaks. Um, this is still smoking. I think this had something spilt on it in that container that was full of black goo and tar and stuff. I think it's just burning off. Um, however, the fuel line that I left soaking a piece of to make sure it was definitely fuel proof, uh, I don't think it is. Look, it's swollen up and gone weird. So I am going to remove that because that's going to split or disintegrate or cause problems so I'm, I'm actually going to take, take that off and change it for a different fuel line because that's really bad uh, apart from that I think we're pretty much done just nipped out between range hours in the dark uh, just to finish this off I put new fuel lines on it um, but I can't put a new fuel filter on it or that fuel filter sorry because that's got 10 mil Spigots, that's the right word. And these are about six, and that was the problem. The fuel line that I'd used was soft enough to go on both, but that's why it was rubbish. So I put proper fuel line on, and now I need, actually need a different fuel filter. So I bought one, same as that, mesh style, inner, not a paper inner, uh, because it's gravity fed. And I just saw that when it arrived, but unfortunately all my post is being really slow at the moment, so that's just gonna have to be the end of the video. Um, I'm going to hold on to that because we've got lots of driveway work to do. Uh, and I'm going to store it on one of these little four-wheel trolley things. Uh, I'm going to put that under it and then wheel it into the into the shed around the other side. So yeah, that's that. One finished project. Many more to go. Uh, anyway, thanks for watching. Don't forget, like the video, subscribe to the channel. Might be fixing something more interesting next time. And I'll see you there. Goodbye.